Hello, welcome to Megger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. In this video, we will discuss how to operate the Digiphone 2 Plus while in Digiphone mode. Let's get started. In order to operate the Digiphone 2 Plus in Digiphone mode, a surge pulse generator must be connected to the faulted cable and operating in thump mode. The surge pulse generator sends a pulse through the cable. When the pulse reaches the faulted point in the cable, it generates an arc. The Digiphone sensor detects the electromagnetic pulse traveling through the cable and the sound of the arc when it reaches the faulting point. The indicator unit uses the difference in time between the electromagnetic pulse and the audio signal of the arc to determine the distance of the fault. When the indicator unit has the DPP-SU sensor plugged in and is turned on, it will start in Digiphone mode. This is the screen that appears when the unit is in Digiphone mode. The center circle with the arrow represents the top of the Digiphone sensor. The green line is the cable and will change position as you move the sensor. When the green line is oriented exactly over the arrow, the sensor is directly on top of the cable. The bar on the bottom is a bar graph for the electromagnetic pulse pickup. When the surge generator is pulsing the cable, the sensor will pick up the electromagnetic pulse and display it. The red line represents the strongest signal received. The numbers on the left appear when the sensor is close enough to the fault to pick up the audio signal from the fault. This number represents the time difference between the electromagnetic pulse and the audio signal. Units of measurement available include milliseconds, meters, or feet. The number on the right represents the time or distance difference from the last position. When using the headphones to pinpoint a fault, the volume would be excessive and potentially damaging to hearing while moving the sensor. For this reason, the automatic proximity mute function activates when touching the handle. This causes the headset to be muted while moving the sensor. Once the sensor has been repositioned and the handle is let go, the headphones are unmuted. This feature can be turned off in the menu if desired. When the sensor is close enough to the fault to pick up the audio signal, the indicator unit will begin to display distance measurements. As the sensor unit gets closer, this number will get smaller. If the number gets larger again, the fault has been passed and is now behind the operator. The number on the left will first appear in a light gray color. When the sensor receives two signals that are within 10% of each other, the indicator unit can confirm a distance to the fault and the number will now be shown in black. Once the fault has been successfully pinpointed, the location can be marked by the operator. The surge pulse generator and the Digiphone 2 Plus can be turned off. The fault can now be excavated and repaired. This concludes the presentation on how to operate the Digiphone 2 Plus in Digiphone mode. Visit the Mega YouTube channel for more videos including technical webinars, product overviews, and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need regarding your electrical testing.